when the system begins to change, when people involved in that system that was strangling the people of God, Luke is saying, that's the beginning of good news. And when the people say, is it? Is it? Are you? Is this the time? Are you the Messiah? John says, no, I'm not the one. But then he points beyond himself to say, one who is mightier than I is coming. One who will take this system that we're living in, the world with all of its problems that we still live in, that one offers us a way out. He's coming. I baptize you just with water. He comes to baptize with the Holy Spirit and fire. He will clean house. It's a time for rejoicing. It's a time to say, wow, we're almost there. God is in the business of acting. And when we think about what that meant at the time of Jesus, that he was one who did enter into that very world, our world, with all of its pits, with all of its corruption in government, with all of its corruption in the church, with all of its corruption in business. That he entered into that world, died under the weight of it, and rose to conquer to say, there, I have handled your world. So we gather as a group of Christians to remind ourselves of what God promised to do, of what God is in the process of doing in Jesus Christ, to look back to that event and to say, I'm glad it is time to rejoice. So we turn our attention now to the old antiphons, to these expressions coming out of the Old Testament that remind us that God is the one the key, who is the key to unlock the prison that we're in. God is the one who gave the covenant from Sinai's height. God is the one who is the root of Jesse, the one who comes to be the promised son of David who will set up an everlasting kingdom. That all of these promises are things that enable us to say, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and to rejoice because God is in the process of giving us life and hope. Amen. Mm -hmm.